Um, what what a win by our guys and, and our team coming off of a, uh, a difficult loss last week. And we talked on Monday in here as a, as a team of we couldn't let Missouri beat us twice. Um, and uh, our, our kids rose up. And uh, our captains, our leaders rose up. And we played an excellent football team. Um, UCF is really talented. Um, they had been 3-0 and, and, and played good football. And we knew this was going to be the type of game it was. Uh, back and forth uh, with an explosive offense they had. Two things we had to do. We had to be able to rush the football. We absolutely had to be able to rush the football to try to keep their play count down. And then the second thing we had to do is we had to get some, some negative plays, some tackle for losses, some things where um, we could get them off the sticks a little bit. And, and for us to hold those guys to 59 plays and 25 minutes, and we have it 82 plays and 34 plus minutes. That was the recipe. Um, the easy name is DJ Giddens. We we challenged DJ. We said we were going to give you the football. Um, you needed to uh, step up. You have all the ability in the world. We've got to believe in you, and we're going to keep giving it to you and keep giving it to you. And then we didn't know if Will would play. And he was not 100% by any means. But in the second half, I told him, you have to run the football for us to secure this win. You, you absolutely have to, because they were starting to key in on things. And they weren't rushing him late. They just started batting balls down. Great job by them. So then Will had to become a, a runner. And I uh, challenged him a couple times on the sideline, and, and he responded. And um, we're 1-0 in league play uh, going into an open week. And couldn't be more thrilled. We're by no means a finished product. We've got to get a lot better as a football team. Uh, we're still growing and learning as a team, but uh, excited to come back home in front of a great sellout crowd. Our crowd was phenomenal tonight. They stayed, they were into it, and uh, they were a big factor in a number of delay games they had in the fourth quarter. Um, just how hard he ran, and he wasn't coming down with first contact, and he made people miss in the open field. He ran through arm tackles. He caught the ball out of the backfield. They were doing some things that uh, our running back had to be able to make plays and um, uh, doing some things outside with our wideouts that were really good, so we had to set him up with matchups on, on in the pass game too. Well, he, he practiced uh, – uh, a fair amount last week, um, but I don't know if he progressed as well as we would have hoped from Wednesday to Thursday. And um, but we thankfully had a night game. I'm never a fan of night games, and and luckily, uh, I know you are Fitz, um, but luckily we had the night game so we could get another 12 hours of recovery and rehab for the kid. Um, but we were going to play him, and he was he wanted to play. Um, I didn't think he could run the ball, uh, watching him warm up. I knew he could throw the heck out of it. And then in the fourth quarter, he had to run the ball. What, what were some of the problems the defense was having through the first six games? Against really good players. I, I mean, that's the thing, I guess. I get a little frustrated in the fact of um, we play good teams, and we and there's teams with really good players. And if I if I'd have told you they're gonna we were gonna give up one trick play, I'd have probably taken it because they were gonna try four or five, and they tried one on the punt return as well. This is what they do, and they do a phenomenal job of it. Are we frustrated? Are we upset that we gave up the trick play? Absolutely. But as has happened to us in the past, uh, last Saturday, we let that play beat us again. And beat us again. And this week we said, guys, they're going to make a play. Let them. Okay, great. They made a play. We screwed up. Let's go back. And uh, I was proud of our guys because, you know, uh, whether it was throwing the ball vertical or handing it to zero and giving it to him on a draw play. I mean, they can score from anywhere. And you know, I, I th we held them to essentially 24 points. I know they scored scored late, but. Uh, um, we did some good things on defense. We've we've got to get better, but we did some good things. How did you feel about the linebacker play in the first game without being in the uh, It's it's a, a work in progress when you don't have your leader out there. Uh, a couple things. Des Purnell was a dude today. Des Purnell was phenomenal. He got one of our players of the game. He was all over the place. He had the big strip. Um, he's incredibly hard to block. He's getting more and more comfortable. I think he's playing at an all-conference level. Um, Austin Moore is always going to be really good. 
We got Austin Romaine out there, and we did not expect Jake Clifton to play, and Jake Clifton probably gave us 25, 30 snaps, and so that was really good. Toby gave us some snaps late, and so um, it stinks to lose your, your, your leader out there, um, but we had all week to prepare not to have Deuce out there, um, so I thought we did a nice job. Yeah, uh, Duff played a little bit too. You know that allowed us to keep Beebs on the left side. You know we rotated Duff and and, and Carver Willis. I thought they both did a nice job. Uh, that's a big front. They're physical. Uh, they get off blocks well. We one thing that we had talked about is we were going to stay committed to the run even if they stuffed us a little bit, and they did. I thought they did a nice job of stuffing us a little bit, but we had to stick with it, especially in the second half when that play count of 82 that we had started to get higher and higher, and I thought we could somewhat wear them down a little bit. Coach, you always talk about being uh, very good in all three phases of the game. Bob and Steve, the special teams had some missed kicks. Some yep. Um, well, we we can't miss the PAT, period. I mean, we, we can't do that. Um, Jack Bloomer had a bomb of a punt, which is a big, big positive. Uh, we took some starters off kickoff. Um, they've got two electric great players back there, so let's give them credit as well. Um, something that we have shore up. We had two penalties that we can't have on special teams um, that took some field position away. Um, but um, uh, it's, it's, we're playing some young guys, and we're going to keep working them. And when you did find out that Will would be the guy to go, I think that kind of gave the guys a, a nice jolt. I don't think there's ever a thought that, that our guys thought that Will wasn't going to play. I, I really don't. I mean, he's that kind of guy that you know, we just expect Will, Will Howard to play quarterback. And... Um, you know, uh, that's that's the sign of a, a great leader like he is. Did it really fall into place really well for you guys? Uh, you guys running 82 plays and Central or UCF running 59. That was the formula, and for us to be able to rush, and you know, we rushed for whatever 281 yards. That's 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 K State football, honestly. I mean, that that's against a team like this that can expect explode and score from anywhere um, for us to be able to control that football in that second half was was critical and you know I, I, once our fans did a phenomenal job they had three delay games in in a drive where they just couldn't hear and I, I my hats off to our fans because that was that was electric tonight and our guys really fed off them in that second half Um, I didn't know that RJ came out until I saw Seth caught the crossing route uh, on the big play. And Seth, Seth Porter, who got nicked up early on in the game, another one that got a player of the game for us because he played on every special teams as well as played significant snaps at wide receiver. I don't have an update on, on RJ. KT did come back in. Well, it – yeah, it was huge to get Duff back, but now we get two weeks to practice with him so that he'll be full speed. We get two weeks to practice with Jake Clifton at full speed. We get two weeks to practice with Garrett Oakley, who played a handful of snaps at full speed. So I'm excited to get uh, a few more bodies back there. You know, there, you can always say it comes at the great time, and you always say it t comes at an awful time. But the fact that it's early in the season, we got to play eight games in a row, stinks, to be honest with you. But we can't control that. And the fact that I don't think we're playing our best football right now, maybe it is coming at the right time so that we can fix some things, offense, defense, and special teams. Because the one thing that I, I do know, and I'm proud of those guys down there, of the great resolve to find a way to win this game, but they know that we're not playing our best football yet. Chris, I know you were you were really animated uh, and excited after some of those runs in the fourth quarter. Is there any reason for that? Just the separation? This was a big game, Kellis. It was a huge game to find a way to win this one. For week four, is this kind of peak offensive efficiency for you guys? Not even close. No, no, we've got to be much better offensively. Um, it was nice we were able to rush the football. We've got to be able to do some things in the passing game. Um, and, you know, I, we were much better on third down. I think we were nine for 15 uh, on third down, which is really good. But I, I ask any of those offensive guys that you have, uh, I, I think we can play better, and they would say the same thing.
It just depends on the game. You know, it really does. Um, this one was one of those games because you could see how fast they wanted to go. And when a fast offense is sitting on the sidelines for six, seven minute drives because we're doing a great job possessing it, it's, you know, then they maybe, you know, try to. Uh, try to go after it in, in big chunks. And, and we had some big stops in that uh, third and fourth quarter to get the ball back to our offense. And then we were able to capitalize on some drives. Yeah, um, we, we strive on, on overcoming adversity. And we always talk about, you know, average teams get destroyed by adversity. Good teams survive it. Great teams get better because of it. And that's what we want to be, uh, a great team. We've got to continue to get better because of the adversity. And I haven't even looked at the injury report. Maybe we had somebody down. But um, you know what? So what, now what? The next guy has to be able to step up and play like that kid did there in Austin Romaine. Okay, thanks everyone.